a witchcraft trial may conjure up images of outdated hysterical events from the Middle Ages. But the last time a woman was jailed in this country under the Witchcraft Act was as recently as 1944. 1944. In the paranoia-filled final days of the Second World War, Helen Duncan, a famous medium from Calendar in Scotland, was sentenced to nine months in prison in a case Winston Churchill himself referred to as obsolete tomfoolery. Helen caught the attention of the authorities when, in a seance, she allegedly revealed wartime secrets that were not yet public knowledge. Debates raged around whether the Scottish housewife was a spy, a fake, or, in fact, a genuine medium. But not prepared to take the chance, she was charged with fraudulent spiritual activity. Well, 72 years later, with the Witchcraft Act now having now been long overruled, an appeal has been submitted to pardon Helen. I'm pleased to say I'm joined now by Helen's granddaughter, Margaret Hahn, who is spearheading the campaign to clear her grandmother's name. Good morning, Margaret. Good morning. Tell me a bit about your grandmother. Ah, uh, well, she was what I was brought up. She was a materialization medium. She would go into trance and bring people's loved ones through. They could see them, they could talk to them, they could touch them. And so, so when we talk about being a spiritualist, rather than using the word witch or anything, because this is what she worked as, what is that? What does that mean? Because lots of people won't know, and I had to, when reading up on this, educate myself. Well, a spiritualist is a person or individual who believes and, and has knowledge to the existence of the continuation of consciousness in the hereafter, after death of the physical body. We don't believe that when you die, that that's it. Right. Um, and then you can... That life goes on. With spiritualism, it's more a way of life. I don't think of spiritualism as a religion. I think of it as a way of life. And so we we help others. We do good. And, you, uh, and my, you're saying we. I take it you're still a spiritualist then. Is this something in your family? Yes, I, I, you know what, I believe. I've always believed, but I wanted, after what was done to my grandmother, I wanted nothing to do with it. OK, let, we'll come back to that in just a moment and how it's affected your life. But there were two incidents that your grandma was involved in that caught the attention of the government. Uh, tell us a bit more about what she believed she was told and, and why that was an issue. Well, you have to understand that when my gran would do a sitting... She would go into trance, and so she had no idea of what was coming through her. It was kind of like she'd be asleep, and her guide, Albert Stewart, would come through. So she didn't know about anything that came through until after she was out of trance, and people would tell her what happened. Um, she, she was fined for fraud, wasn't she, on numerous occasions? Because one. obviously <clears throat> one occasion, OK. But in wartime Britain, when she got the attention of the authorities, it was because she'd claimed at a seance, and I understand how you've, you've given the context to that, that a British ship had sunk. This was in 1941. And uh, it, it, was, it was in terms of how she sort of confirmed this, it was that she had made contact, uh, you know, with, with a spirit there and had it confirmed, and people were obviously in between those two world wars, had lost a lot of people and wanted to know what had happened to them? Well, there was two ships. The HMS Hood went down, oh, I think it was May the 24th, 1941, and Brigadier Firebrace, who was the head of military intelligence for Scotland, was at the sitting, and Albert, my grandmother's guide, told Brigadier Firebrace that we had lost a ship. He went back to his office, tried to verify it, and they said, no, we, they hadn't had news. Uh, about four hours later, um, he, he got a phone call verifying that we had lost the hood. So, so, the first... so, so what she had said in this seance was true? Oh, yes. Right. So, and, that, and that was what aroused suspicion, because how could she know that? She was a medium. Okay. I mean, and go on. And the, had, and the second one? 
Uh, the second one was uh, the 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 Barham, and that went down the twenty fifth of November. This is she HMS was, Barham. Yeah, she. Um, there was a young lad that we lost, and uh, his mum was there, and she didn't know that he had passed over. He came through to tell his mum that he was okay. And I believe that she contacted the Admiralty. They wanted to know where this information come from because we were in wartime. Okay. And I mean, so and this, the and information... This, uh, the, the information yeah, they, was considered secret. It wasn't something that the, the, the public were meant to know about yet. It was thought that it would have an adverse effect on morale, wasn't it? Uh, that's, that's why the officials and the authorities were, were concerned about this information. Putting aside for a moment that the how and why and your your grandmother managed to get this information, because as I said, you know, she was she was fined for fraud. But her legacy in terms of this this criminal record and the fact that she was essentially tried as a witch or under this witchcraft act, it can't have been easy for you and for your family. It hasn't been. I'm 61 years old. And how has it affected I, you? I have worked tirelessly for about 30-odd years trying to get my grandma recognised for a remarkable medium that she was. I'll but, tell you... If, but to clear if her I, name as well, I imagine. I'm working on it. And I will work on it until the day I die. Were you aware of, um, the, of the case and what had happened to her when you were growing up? Yes. And I, I'd lay in bed and I couldn't understand how. Because I'm Scottish. I might sound American, but I'm Scottish. How a country that I was brought up to love could have hurt my grandmother in such a manner. I mean, now that I'm older, I understand what was done, why it was done, but it destroyed and damaged my family. I'm Look, I'm, I'm a granddaughter who loves her grandma, and all I want is her name, our good name, to be restored. And, uh, that's, and that's what this pardon would mean for your family? Yeah. Okay, let me, let me bring in Graham Hewitt, who's helping you with this legal appeal. Graham, this case has been unsuccessfully appealed a number of times before. Just to remind my listeners, we're talking about the last woman to be imprisoned, essentially for being a witch or under the Witchcraft Act. What makes you think it could now be a success, this, this appeal for a pardon? Well, the two appeals that have gone forward, one to the Criminal Cases Review Commission and also to the... Um, uh, unfair trials commission at the um, at the Home Office. They came miscarriage of justice team. They came back and said that there was no new evidence. They were looking at the evidential side. What we're looking at here is the way that the the arrest happened, which was basically an entrapment by police. And uh, Lieutenant Worth, who was the main informant on this case, uh, came forward and admitted that he was working under police instructions. The police instructions being Chief Constable West, who is head of security in the Portsmouth area. That's why she was arrested, because obviously what she'd previously come out with uh, concerning the hood and the barroom meant that she was a risk. There she was in Portsmouth in uh, April of, uh, uh, sorry, in January of 1944, with the muster going on for the Dunkirk landings. Uh, if she happened to say something about people being killed on the Dunkirk landings, that was a risk to security. Um, only about a quarter of a mile away from where she was meeting, all the chiefs of staff were there, and they were under the impression, uh, quite wrongly, that she may well have eavesdropped on something that was being prepared and caused a risk to security. That was the start of the investigation. And how much does the Turing law, in terms of... We've learned about that relatively recently, pardoning yes. those criminalised under an act that no longer exists obviously, with regard to homosexuality. But how much has that given you hope that you could be successful here? Well, I'm looking at this in parallel. We've got a 1735 Act, which is not really applicable in 1944, being used This is for the Witchcraft Act. The Witchcraft Act. And it was replaced, we should say, in 1951 by the Fraudulent Mediums Act. Yes. But, I mean, given that, that Helen was formally charged as a fraudulent medium... How much hope have you got that 
she can be uh, this can be considered quite a lot can because I... in 1943 the spiritualist national union led a deputation to the parliamentary under the secretary of state in order to get the witchcraft act and the vagrancy act repealed now unfortunately because of wartime activities that was not considered in parliament <clears> quite <throat> properly and it was deferred until the reconsideration of it in 1951, partly because of the outrage that happened as a result of the uh, Helen Duncan imprisonment. All right, let and Margaret, come back in. In 1944, it, she was not charged for fraud. They couldn't charge her for fraud because they knew they wouldn't get a conviction. Precisely. So that's why they came up with the Witchcraft Act of 1735. They were guaranteed a conviction. I mean, she was guilty before the trial started. They amended the Witchcraft Act. It used to say conjuration of evil spirits. They took out the word evil. And right. so it was conjuration of spirits. Now, I, I'm going to say something else. In 1939, the Church of England did a report on spiritualism. Seven out of ten agreed that spiritualism is genuine. Okay, and well, I, think, I mean, that aside, we can't sort of debate that as, a, as an issue right now. I mean, what, right. it's very clear that you yourself believe in this, but she, uh, she, you know, she came up for fraud in terms of people, there's reports about when she said, you know, things were various, people were talking to her and the white sort of thing that was coming out of her was actually a cheesecloth or some sort of cloth that was coming out of her. I mean, there's all sorts of reports. Yeah, there's, there's all sorts of reports about whether that is the case or not. It's clear that you still believe that, but let's not get into to that as a debate per se. What I, right. what, I would, what I would ask, I mean, when is this going to get considered? When do you, will you find out if you can have a pardon for your grandmother? The papers will be going off as a result at, at the end of today down to uh, the Justice Secretary and also to uh, Nicola Sturgeon, uh, a former human rights lawyer, obviously now the... Um, uh, parliament uh, leading this Scottish Parliament so that they can consider it and ask them for a reconsideration based on the Turing principle. OK, well, we'll stay with that as we get it. And, Margaret, can I just ask you very quickly, I did read this and I don't know if it's the case, but did Winston Churchill go and visit your grandmother in prison? No, he didn't. OK, I wasn't sure if that was the case, but he did refer to the case as tomfoolery. He did yes. refer to the case and actually I'm friends with somebody whose aunt was Churchill's secretary, and he informed me that, yes, she did sit with Churchill. She did. Wow, OK. Um, so Churchill actually himself attended a seance. Oh, yeah. Church, uh, Churchill believed. Churchill yes, believed. most definitely. Well, on that note, we'll leave it there. Margaret Hahn, thank you very much for coming onto the programme, talking about trying to clear the name of her grandmother, the last woman in the UK to be jailed under the Witchcraft Act and the lawyer there who is helping spearhead that attempt at a pardon, Graham Hewitt.